All right, guys, we are with Hunter Moore today. And for those of you that don't know Hunter Moore, if you do a quick Google search on YouTube or anywhere on Google, Hunter Moore comes up as AKA as the revenge porn king. And now more recently as the most hated man on the internet, um, which I don't agree with that, but Hey Hunter, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing, Dan? I'm doing good, but I appreciate you coming back on here and doing this. Uh, a couple of years ago, I know you did a video with us talking a little bit about kind of the situation and probation after you served your prison sentence. Um, and now this yeah. is all getting jarred back up and brought back up again. How does this kind of, how does this make you feel with everything going on right now? It's awesome to be back. Uh, you know, cause today I got a message on Instagram, which I showed you of this girl who had saw the trailer and she was like, I did my own research. And then I found th your video with this guy, Dan, <laughs> um, do you care if I share that screenshot? I mean, obviously, I won't show your phone number. Yeah, I don't know. I just, it's kind of, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, you should probably edit her name out, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, good idea. Um, but, yeah, no, it's 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 a it's a little difficult situation because I, I did my time, and um, I'm not so much worried about myself. I'm more just worried about, you know, like my immediate friends and family having to deal with this stuff all over again, and that's pretty much that's pretty much my, the only negative, I guess. <laughs> so for people that are watching now. that, that don't know really much about this other than that's a new not, uh, Netflix documentary. And I think this is the same people that did, uh, don't fuck with cats. I think that was what it was called. Yeah. Don't fuck with cats. It was actually a really big documentary. Um, and I think they also did the Tindler swindler, but I'm not sure, you know, they have like a certain genre that they're following. Uh, so let's take people back that haven't followed your story and don't know much about this. So back in 2009, 2010, you had a website. So tell us a little bit about what that website was, what it was intended for, and kind of what happened with it. Um, so I I don't know how to explain it so much. It was, the origin of the story was that I used to be a club promoter. And every day... I would get on Facebook and I would type, is anyone up like at 12 a.m. or 1 a.m. And it kind of just became this phrase that I would use like while promoting my parties. So I started uh, is anyone up dot com and I would just post all my flyers for the parties that were coming up. It was built on WordPress and yeah, I just post all my flyers for my friends and stuff. And um, yeah, that was pretty much it. And then one day. Uh, I was hooking up with a girl that was a fan of, uh, or she was dating a band, a band guy from, uh, this band called bless the fall. And everyone hated the, the singer from the dude or from the band bless the fall. And he had a super hot girlfriend. Anyway, all my buddies wanted to see her naked. And so we were on iChat and we're like on iChat, you could cam with each other. Like this was before zoom or any of that stuff. And uh, you could drag a picture like into the cams so people couldn't save it, but you could show the whole room. And every time we would try and do that, it would uh, drop the connection. And we were like restarting our, our computers and doing all this stuff. Like this is back in the day. This was, you couldn't even send, I don't, you couldn't even send multimedia messages on iPhone at the time. Anyway. So then uh, my buddy Carlos was like, just put it on as anyone up. So I just put it on as anyone up. And then we just slowly, all the boys just started adding to it. And it went from just me to three friends to 10 friends to 15 friends to friends of friends. And then, then yeah, it just kind of got out of hand. So the site in its original yeah. creation, it was used for, because you were doing a lot of DJing, you are doing parties. Were you somewhat of like a... Uh, uh, an event planner? Is that kind of what you were doing? Because I, when I was looking back at it, I, it just seemed like you were always DJing somewhere. Yeah, so I grew, like, I mean, I had no formal education or anything. I just liked partying and girls. So, so uh, <laughs> I, I started, like, my party career, like, pretty early. I had a pretty successful little business in high school on AOL Instant Messenger called uh, WHS party scene. And that's kind of like where I started with, uh, down this road. And it was basically just a bot and it would tell you all the parties that were going on in, uh, in my town. And so like, I would just, I just was throwing parties since I was a little kid. And then I went from 
Sacramento or greater Sacramento area to San Francisco and then to LA and then New York and then Australia. And I just kind of like built this brand around throwing parties, like literally pretty much all over the world. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much just how it started. And like it, the DJing and everything just came, came with that later on. And so when the site did eventually blow up, it was just my whole lifestyle went, you know, went with it. And that was part of the charm of the website was that back in the day you had a scene, like a, the music scene and you had this, the bands and all that, that whole scene. And so all of those people from the party scenes and the club scene and the bands, they all kind of converged on is anyone up because I was dabbling in all these different scenes and I knew, you know, I knew all these, I guess, big players at the time in the social media influencer realm before it became all of that. So it was just kind of like, uh, yeah, it was just a, it was just the, uh, I don't know. It was just the amorphous blob of my personality. Is it is it fair to say that when you created and also tell us when when you actually did create the URL, but when you created the URL for this website, was there any intent to you know use it to exploit girlfriends and boyfriends that were posting up their pictures? No, dude. It was just guys being guys. But you also have to understand the time back then, like. You know, so this is like sidekick days was when you were first able to start sending multimedia messages to each other. And like on the sidekick, you got T mail and T mail, it only lets you store 50 messages on it with attachments. Sorry. And uh, that's where, like, <laughs> you know, young adults my age, you would save all your girls' nudes and vice versa. Girls would send up, save all the dudes' nudes in their T-mail. That was just like what it was. So like back then, it wasn't like a big deal to see people naked or anything. It was just kind of like an everyday thing. But as far as like me creating this to, to do it, no, it just like went hand in hand with the scene that I was in. Do you know what I mean? So there was no intention to mess any or it wasn't like <laughs> I'm in my chamber, <laughs> like trying to, you know, I'm going to crawl down their chimneys and take their naked pictures. It was nothing like that. It was just an organic thing that was already there. And uh, it was just boys being boys. And then it just went too far. You'd said a few seconds ago, you said uh, adults back when adults would do these types of things. And let's kind of bring the time frame. H how old were you when this was all going on? Because, I mean, I know you were <coughs> of age, but I think there's a fine line between yeah. an adult and what age you were when that was happening. Yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't a young boy, but I was about, I don't know what, I don't know what I was, 22, 23, something like that. I mean, oldest 24, but, uh, yeah, I was, I was fairly young. I mean, I've compared to now, but... Yeah, it was my early 20s, like really early 20s. And I think that plays a big role into, you know, factoring in because anybody watching or listening, when they hear the term adult, I was an adult, you know, yeah, 21, 22, 23, sure, you were an adult. But you show me any an average 21, 22, 23-year-old today's day and age with all of this trolling on the internet and how and when this took place, I think uh you know, you really caught people off guard being you were somewhat ahead of the times with the whole social media platform and posting stuff on the Internet. Um, did you ever think in your wildest dreams that it would a get as big as it got and ultimately end with you going to federal prison and then years later grow its own legs and jump back on the Internet and kind of pick <laughs> up traffic again? Um it's like it, it, that's like a yes and no type of question because in the moment like when i was first starting it i guess i you have to understand like i never showed my face at, at the beginning like i didn't want anyone to know i was running it i was actually shutting the site down multiple times and we filmed like these crazy music videos and all this crazy stuff as the site just went from zero to a hundred and you know obviously i was not prepared for what was going on it, it it, it to explain it was like again it was the early stages of the internet but to go viral the way that i went viral 
and at the time, like you had Twitter, it was like in its infancy and all this other stuff. So you didn't really have like the infrastructure that a lot of these kids have now where like, you know, the Island boys make a funny song and they're just boom, they're huge. This was like, uh, uh, to explain it is like, it's really oversaturated now. Back then, like you only had a few things that were going on. Like people check their, they were still on desktops mostly. Like most of my analytics, it wasn't just mobile like it is now. Like it was it was overwhelmingly desktop. So like when people got online, it was more on their desktops and it was like, that was the thing that they went to. So like the traffic was insane and it went from literally five to 10 people to 14,000 people in a day to, I mean, it, to, I don't know, a hundred thousand people ne the next week. And then 500,000 people in a day the next week. And then a million people, like it was just insane. So for someone like, just partying and having a good time trolling with my friends i just i was ignorant to the situation i don't think any kid my age would ever could ever be prepared for something like that and uh you know the girls were there so i guess kind of went out of hand <laughs> <laughs> when so yeah when it so when it when it started <laughs> jumping off and it went from you know a few people to fourteen thousand to you know to millions um when did you know that this was like, A, did you monetize it in any way? Were you making money from this? Was anybody reaching out to you that was like, hey, I want to be your manager or I want to be your attorney to make sure that you don't legally, you know, hang yourself. Was there any guidance at all coming from anywhere? And were you making money with it? Okay, so I, <clears throat> you know, I like I was in San Francisco for a while. Like I was doing hair. I did some stuff for like adult companies and stuff like that. So I kind of already had the connections. Plus I was like partying. So I had like, you know, you're just meeting all these people all coked out and stuff. So like I had met a lot of people in the adult industry already that were like fairly good acquaintances. So when I started getting a lot of traffic, I just immediately reached out to, to these guys and they, they told me, they were like, listen, we'll buy ads, but you need to hit uh, around 10,000 uniques a day. So I was like, well, bro, uh, you know, I'm at like 150,000 and they were like, what? So there was this company, I, I don't want to uh, say the company or give them any press because they completely banned me from their network, but they bought, uh, they bought a, basically every piece of real estate you could put an ad on, on my website. And uh, they gave me like, I forget what it was. The first, like we did like a test ad for like 500 bucks or something. And I was like, bro, I'm balling, like, you know, and you got to understand, like, I was dead broke at this time, too. And I, so I was all excited. And then the next week, they were like, all right, here's $5,000. And they were probably hustling me because of the, now I know the traffic is so amazing. They definitely stole from me. And so, uh, again, zero to 100, broke ass little kid to making fairly decent money in a matter of seconds. So like here, these are the 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 seeds that were planted in my head to start growing this character and this ego, um, and so you know once you do that it it, it falls away pretty <laughs> it falls away pretty quick, um, and then as far as people reaching out to me, uh, yeah I had all kinds of people I mean I I've been through literally from the top to the bottom of agencies all the way from like crappy little local band agencies all the way to william morris which is like the one of the biggest uh whatever uh, talent agencies in the world so i've been on all of these things and they're all scumbags and they're all stealing from you um but i did have one guy that really helped me out i'm not going to say his name because he's super private uh he was my manager almost through the whole thing um uh he uh yeah i met a friend through another friend or my manager through a friend and uh we're still best friends to this day uh he actually lives down by you in uh hollywood florida but he's amazing guy has my best interest at heart like i still call him to this day to like you know for uh you know advice or anything really he's a he's an amazing guy and i was actually really lucky to to find him because you know looking back like i they could have anyone could have taken advantage of me, advantage of me at the time. So you had a manager and you, you said something a couple seconds ago, you said when this thing all kind of started and get, really started blowing up, you kind of created this character, this ego driven character. So how much, how much of what everybody saw was, was character and how much of that was real Hunter Moore that, you know, like the guy I got to know over the last couple of years. <laughs> so 
it's it's like I don't know how to explain it, man. It's like that character, like it's just those fantasies, like you act in your your mind, you know, as a when you're a normie or a civilian, <laughs> uh, and you finally get to outlive them and and you get to embrace like the the cool version of you that you've always had in your head, and so you know, obviously that's there. I mean, I acted upon that, but you know, I could have. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, I, I'd say 50, 50, you know what I mean? <laughs> the problem is, is that you get, you embrace it and you, it, you think that is you and then you become it. And then it's, uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know. It, it's a weird, there needs to be some like whole crazy psychology breakdown on this because, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's literally the most powerful drug in the world. Like heroin, fentanyl, that's child's play to fame, dude. I would imagine that uh, the the real hunter and the character at some point they must blend together because it really became your real life. Like as far as not just all the crazy fun shit, but also everything that followed, um, which we're definitely going to get yeah. into because it's quite the story. But when all this really started going off and, you, and it's the, the website started gaining popularity, how? How did it go from the website it was meant to be to the website it really became? And when did you receive your first phone call to appear on either a talk show, um, interviewed? And who was it that that called you up the first time? I had flown down to L.A. to I met this really hot chick. I forget her name. Anyways, I flew down to L.A. to, to I sold my MacBook, dude, and I flew down there because I just wanted to get laid. And so I flew down there and this other girl was at this party and she had, or like, because we were at like a little kickback function and this chick, she posted herself on the site. Like this was way before I was like making really, like way before it blew up, right? And uh, she, I don't know, she wanted to hook up or someone was jealous of this whole thing. Anyway, she destroyed this girl's house like right in front of me. I mean, like tore everything off the walls, like, it was insane. She got my clothes and cut them up with scissors. Like, it was so crazy. Anyway, I get home and I get a call from, uh, from what's that? Uh, Judy? Uh, no, Judge Judy. Judge Judy. Judge Judy called you. Yeah. Okay. So then that was the, that was the very first one. And, and she had ran to some friend that was a casting director or something for Judge Judy and was going to take me to small claims court. And then, then it got even crazier though, is my cousin who I had a falling out with, who was my attorney, like on, on some other stuff. We'll get into that later, but we had a whole falling out and she went to represent that girl. So anyways, I, I didn't do it, but <laughs> on judge duty. Yeah. And so that was but, my first, first call. <laughs> okay. But you never, you never, I never saw that one. So you didn't do that. No, I didn't do that. Okay. No. What was the first one you did do? What was the first one you took up? And and did they pay you? That would be No, they don't pay you. I got uh I did Anderson Cooper. That was like the first one I did, I think. And what was the sales pitch when they called you up like, "Hey, Hunter, we 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 love your website." I mean, what was the uh what was the approach? Cuz they kind of filleted you and I don't I, I did you know that was coming or were you blindsided by all that? Oh yeah, no, they gas me up. Like they, that's what they do. They're just liars. Like all they do is lie, 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 lie. And it's called the, uh, it's, uh, I forget what she said. Like one of the directors for that. Cause I was, I was furious. Right. Uh, after this. And she was like, Hunter, it's, uh, it's called cooking the show. We need to cook the content. We need to make sure like, you know, we're not going to bring you out here and it's like a big old happy fun day and you're like the most awesome guy in the world no we need to cook the content and i was like cook the content what so anyways the whole pitch was that they were gonna fly all of my friends out and talk about the website but it ended up just being an ambush they dressed me in black they flew all my friends there like every girl that was on or everyone that was on anderson cooper were my friends like the girl that was complaining about being posted on the site we were just kicking it with her. Like these were all of our friends. It was like just one big troll. And then 
So I, they were like, well, we can fly you there, but you can't, can't be on their plane because we can't have the guest uh, or the subject and the guest talk, like on the same flight. So then I was like, okay, this is getting a little strange. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, they flew me first class, put me in, I forget, like a, one, a fancy hotel. I forget what it was. Uh, wine to dine me. Then we get there, dress me in black. It was a whole ambush. The My buddy Brody, they... They, he had like hella tattoos. They put makeup all over him so he would look like a good guy in this like really feminine, like, I don't know, purple sh- chemise sweater or something. Like made him look like this innocent dude. And he, we were literally just running a train on the girl that was uh, saying that we we're horrible people for posting her on the side. I don't know. It was just, it was just so stupid, dude. It's all lies. Anyways, you're getting me all riled up. <laughs> So that was, that was the Anderson Cooper interview, which, which I definitely saw that. So oh yeah. And check it out. Let me, let me tell you this too. He refused to shake my hand. Ref- he met everybody, but he wouldn't shake my hand. And, and he's real. And he's built super weird. I don't know if you've seen that guy. He, it's like, he only works out his chest. So he's like the sucked up little weak, like, like thing, but he's got these huge pec muscles, dude. So when he refused anyway. to shake your hand, <laughs> was that on the air or was that behind the scenes? No, it was behind the scenes. Okay. Yeah, because so, he definitely ripped then, he uh, definitely ripped my, you a new one. There's no doubt. Yeah, but again, I didn't I'm on the headspace I'm in is like, oh, these guys just want to talk about the site. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it was like er, no, dude, we're here, we're here to throw you under the bus and kick your dead body. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah, it was just an ambush, man. It was just an ambush. So, so yeah, anybody that wants to go watch that interview and kind of get the contrast of what we're talking about here, I'm sure you can Google Hunter Moore, Anderson Cooper, and it'll come right up. Um, oh, so, the- and they, my buddy, he brought me some Jack Daniels in the back because I was, like, obviously nervous. And they busted through the door. We're watching us in the green room or something, and they were like, we will kick you out of the building if you drink that. And I'm like... Uh, all right. Really? To ruin my life, so I don't know. Yeah, it was crazy. So when when you uh, agreed to do this show or you got the phone call, did you have any legal representation at this point? Or because I, you know, I've I've had a million conversations with your mom, who's absolutely fucking amazing. Um, was she like Hunter? I appreciate it. Hunter, don't don't do it. Did your mom like foresee any of the uh, the shit storm coming down? No, I mean, so the reason, so before we did the interview, I had you talk to uh, Amanda. She had ran my fan page the whole time, and you got to understand, like the website, like this whole narration of what the website uh, was today because it's been controlled by all these green haired goblins, but you know, and all, you know, it's all about clickbait and pushing traffic and all that stuff. And they've controlled the narrative. Um, but you know, my parents, everybody was so supportive of everything because it wasn't that like, it was just this funny, hilarious website. And that had this funny, crazy, quirky community and it wasn't anything malicious then or, you know, and I'm not justifying saying that nobody was hurt or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, for the time and what it actually was, it was like, wow, everyone was, like, proud of me, to be honest with you. Because it just, it's not like this, you know, we're killing babies or strangling <laughs> little kittens on the website. Like, they're making it sound like, but, yeah. So, take us to the mind space of... You're kind of on top of the world. You're getting ad space. People are buying up ad space to fill up the because you had all the space on the website. Um, you, you get a call from Anderson Cooper. You get your teeth kicked in on live TV. When did it go from all fun and games to not wanting to turn on the TV and just wishing your name would not, not be mentioned under uh, in anybody's breath? Well, then. That literally never happened. <laughs> okay. <was> literally. <laughs> so yeah. T- so t- so dick. take us through. Take us through. Where it went from everybody was thought it was fantastic to to how everybody else started viewing you. Well, I would say the, the that pivotal point would have been the Anderson Cooper. So the this was kind of like the bad or the the, the like when my 
management and like our my team and everybody who worked for me at that time we talked about doing anderson cooper um you know it was in our, it was in the back of the mind our minds and we were having conversations of okay now it's going mainstream and you know tv still was dominating all of media back then so when you know that's when the normies are going to come out of the woodwork when you're on the tv right so we were a little afraid of the type of traffic we were going to get because you know like they didn't understand they're not a part of the scene they're not a part of the music scene they're not part of the club scene they're not a part of you know what we were doing and so that's when it was that pivotal moment or when it peaked uh as far as you know started getting hate from like normies and press blogs and all this stuff um because yeah the traffic completely changed and that's when the content that was being submitted to the site changed also and not and for the worse it was, it was really it, i should never have done it it was it was really it was really negative on all, when, all fronts when you say the content changed what so just to recap real quick prior to uh, prior to Anderson Cooper content was what? And then after Anderson Cooper content became what? Okay. So the, the content that was, uh, was there before Anderson Cooper was again, all revolved around the scene bands, uh, DJs, all that stuff and people that were relevant in that scene. So, and then the, like, like reaction gifts, all that stuff kind of like was, in stories and all kinds of types of funny content and stuff was on the site. Yes, there was naked pictures. I was part of it, but like music was the heavy driving factor of this on well, clubs too. Once Anderson Cooper came, now we, we kept that except it, now it expanded to, to normies. So uh, when you went, we went from like scene kids to now like regular, just regular people. And that meant that the submissions were changing as well. So now you're bringing all these crazies out of the woodwork. And, you know, I know everyone wants to think women are the like angels and all this stuff. But once like regular women found out about the website, that's when the, the horrible content started being submitted. Like death revenge was what I called it anyways. It would be like a girl that, uh, a bunch of like a click of girls didn't like they would find like she was in an accident or something like that they would submit the pictures would and that was what i called death revenge abusing animals for attention uh you know just all this crazy stuff and that was all because of the anderson cooper stuff so that's where the content changed now it wasn't posted on our site we had the I mean, I was a drunken, coked out retard, but the one thing that I did do is I had an amazing age verification system. Um, and that was really all I focused on. And that's why the feds couldn't find any, anything bad in that sense, like underage content or anything. And believe me, they tried for two years um, because I put together an amazing approval process and we used EXIF data and other records to make sure that everybody was of age. But besides that, the, the content that was submitted was just so horrific is like after the Anderson Cooper stuff, it was about five, four or five months. I actually stepped away completely from the site until I ended up selling it. So yeah, I hope that answered your question. It, it did. It did for sure. Thank you for that. Um, so when the content was changing and because to this day, there's people that, that I don't know if they just read one headline somewhere and then they start blurting stuff out, but they're, well, of course, what did he think? He was putting underage women's pictures on there. And as of even recently, yeah. I did some Google searches and stuff and, you know, on Facebook, just searching relevant terms for, you know, the new documentary. There's to this day, there's people chatting in, in chat rooms or on Facebook saying, uh, you know, I remember when this was going on and I was underage and Hunter Moore was in my DMs asking me for pictures you know, it, yes. none of this was ever proven, correct? There was never proof of one underage photo being on your site. Is that correct? Yeah, they're cr it's just people that want attention. I, it's uh, it, it's so stupid. Like, dude, I have an instance of the site as the day it shut down. Like, I can throw it up on my Linux server at any time. Like, okay, you want to make up uh, a lie that you were posted on the site? Well, let's check the database, dude. <laughs> it's not... Yeah, uh, you know, if I had any charge like that, I would have been a sex offender. Um, you know, I had aggravated identity theft, 
conspiracy to have aggravated identity theft and un conspiracy to have unlawful access to a secured computer. They wanted me, dude, and you know the federal government. But all that, all that stuff is just it's it's just an obvious lie. All these, it, it's just kind of like makes me sick. Like um, just the slander that has been thrown out there, all because these people want attention. And I'm taking legal action, dude. I've already been proven that's not true. I mean, look, you can look at the discovery. You can look at my case. You can look at my co-defendant. None of that stuff was true. And uh, I have hired an attorney or a, a law firm anyways. That's already I'm going after two people on TikTok and one <laughs> one uh, podcast right now. So not this yeah. one. Um, so no, not this one. But <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. So. Right now, all these people that, you know, because obviously it grew, it got to a point where it was an easy target to throw shade your way. Um, I bet there, do you think there's a lot of people right now that are saying, you know, Hunter's getting a taste of what he gave us? You know, how does it feel? Do, does it, is it something you wish you had never done? No. Uh, well, flat out, no. First of all, uh, I, I mean, this probably sounds horrible, but I'm proud of what I created. I'm proud of the community that I created. Now, how do I wish I would have gone about it in a different way? A hundred percent. And, you know, I'm obviously more than sorry for, and definitely would love to apologize to people that were affected negatively by the website. Um, but besides that, you know, like I did do my time. Like, I feel like I did pay my dues. Um, and it, it wasn't all negative and I had a great time and I would definitely do it over and over again, but I would do it in a different way. And, uh, I would definitely take back, uh, any of the trauma that anybody suffered from the website, um, or, you know, it's just anything that, uh, negative that happened to the site because back then I didn't, I didn't understand it, dude. I mean, just a selfish little kid and just drunk on fame, you know what I mean? So had I had I had good guidance and was prepared uh, in a positive way, not just being like everyone gassing you up and telling you you're the most amazing person in the world because they just want to get laid and do drugs. Uh, yeah, definitely. I would have gone about it completely different. And had I done that, my life would have probably been 10 times cooler and I probably wouldn't have gone to prison. So, <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> with all of that said, take us through a quick timeline of when you started this this lifestyle this, the the website the lifestyle how long did all of this last with with good vibes money coming in party scene how long did all this last before you got your first interaction with with the federal government and how how did they approach you well okay so you know i started in 2010 i was about 2000 it was it was about the beginning of 2012 no, maybe not. Maybe it was like, no, it was 2011 because the complaint, like my federal complaint or whatever was 2011. So yeah, it was about 2011. They were, tr they kept trying to take our servers. Well, no, they were taking our servers, like kept taking, we would go and get a whole new server rack and they take that. It was just like constant, dude. It was like, so that, well, actually a really funny story was, uh, I, my buddy was getting married and so we planned this whole like bachelor bachelor party almost a bachelorette bachelor party in reno and we i rented like a maserati or some retarded car and so we're driving and i'm smoking a blunt and i'm driving and, and it's like pitch black in the in the mountains and i'm driving straight up like because it's black you know and then i'm high and i'm wigging out anyway so i pull over in the middle of nowhere and i'm like bro i can't drive i can't drive and we're all high like giggling and stuff and then uh i get a call from my manager and this was the first time i had any actual interaction with the legal stuff and my manager goes bro the fbi just took our servers the website's offline they're i don't know what they're doing and i was high dude and i like wigged out like i because I, I didn't know what was going on dude i've never been in trouble before i mean like this and then uh so then everyone was like, dude, I was like, I'm going home, dude. I'm, I'm getting out of here. And so everyone, so I got on the freeway and was driving home. No, everyone wanted to still party and they lied to me. And I was just so high. I kept driving to Reno. <laughs> so I ended up partying anyways. But yeah, that's, that was probably the first time. Uh, and that was, that, that was the feds that, that 
seized your uh, seized your servers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you say they took your servers, were these physical servers or were these like Amazon servers? Did they kick in the doors? Did they have a warrant? Like, how how did they get them? Well, yeah. So this was, I mean, a- AWS was just or Amazon Web Services was just in its infancy. So most people that don't know, you can create virtual servers on the fly. But uh, no, these were physical physical racks. Um, the company. I'm not going to give any of these people a shout out, but yeah, they, uh, it was a physical server. So, but, but what they do is they just go and they just copy the server over. And, but this you know, wasn't, they, they, the servers weren't like at your house or at an office that you were frequenting. No, no, no. no okay. They were offsite no, servers. No, no, no. Oh yeah. 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 We used a whole company that stored everything. Okay, yeah. so they came, they took your servers, freaked you out, you're super high driving with a Maserati through the mountains, going to Reno. <laughs> when when did you actually cool. have some engagement with with the feds or the FBI, whoever whoever it was that originally contacted you? When was your first contact with them? And when did you start taking it serious? When did you know that you were in some some deep water? So they i was just i was high and <laughs> i was trying to go to bed it was like 6 a.m i've been tweeting all day just in the trenches you know and uh i was about to pass out and then they busted down my door and put a gun to my head naked well i was in my underwear my chonies and uh yeah that that was my first interaction with them besides them taking my server 